गुड मॉर्निंग क्लास सेवन स्टूडेंट हाव आर यू ऑल सो आई होप ऑल ऑफ यू आर एब्सोल्यूटली फाइन सो वाई हैज प्रेरणा मैम कम टू दर गैन बिकॉज इन टूडेज क्लास वी आर गोइंग टू बी स्टार्टिंग चैप्टर नंबर टू फ्रॉम योर टेक्सट बुक चैप्टर नंबर टू ऑफ हिस्ट्री विच इज द राइज एंड स्प्रेड ऑफ इस्लाम सो इन दीवियस क्लास वी स्टार्टेड अबाउट वन beautiful religion of christianity and today we are going to read about another beautiful religion of islam so like i told you in the previous class that it is very very important that we have respect for all forms of religion all different types of religion that we see around us we should have respect for our religion as well as of others and why should that be the case so that we can establish a harmonious society a society where peace exists so now in the previous class when we started about christianity we started the various aspects like how did it emerge who was the propagator of christianity who brought this religion and what were its various teachings and the following cases related to christianity like uh who supported christianity what were the teachings and how did it spread to so many parts of the world and what gradually happened with the religion in today's class when we study this chapter that is the rise and spread of islam which is chapter number 2 we are going to be studying this religion on these aspects only that how did it originate how did it spread who were the famous uh, personalities maybe associated with this religion and what were the teachings what were the consequences of this religion so what is it that i want all of you to do very quickly is to open your textbooks to page number 15 15 come on quick so chapter number 2 and this is rise and spread of islam and in this lesson what is it that we are going to mainly focus on we are going to study about the pre islamic conditions in saudi arabia birth of prophet muhammad then early life teachings and five basic principles of islam so like we studied what are the teachings of jesus christ here we are going to study the five basic principles of islam migration of prophet muhammad to medina okay okay and what else are we going to study then we are going to study about prophet muhammad's return to makkah so what is makkah makkah and medina these are the holy places for uh, for muslims then the demise of prophet muhammad and the beginning of caliphate then spread of islam and the abbasid and the umayyad dynasty so we are going to also read about two dynasties so like i told you that for any religion that we study about or any kingdom any dynasty that we going to study about we are first going to understand about their origination okay so let us start understanding or knowing about the origination of islam so the first thing that we need to understand about islam religion is that it is based on the principle of monotheism that is that there is existence of only one god all right religious traditions that originated and spread from middle east in the 7th century ce so they started spreading from the middle east and at what around what around what time 7th century ce the followers of islam are known as muslims meaning one who submits to the will of allah so we know that in islam god is addressed as allah correct and what happens muslim by the term muslim we mean someone who accepts whatever allah has given or the way allah has decided one's life so there is so much of devotion towards the god the muslims they believe that god revealed the quran the holy book to muhammad through angel gabriel so it is a belief so like we have stories 
in some uh, religions. So similarly in Islam as well, it is believed that this holy book Quran, like what is the holy book in Christianity? We started in the last class. It is called as Bible. So for Muslims, the holy book is Quran. And it is believed that this holy book called Quran, it was revealed to Muhammad, to Prophet Muhammad by angel Gabriel. The Arabic Quran means recitation or uh, reading. That is the Arabic meaning. Moving on. So first we're going to talk about the pre-Islamic time. So you remember we started in the previous class about how before Christianity, Judaism was followed and later on Christianity came into existence. So now we're going to talk something about the pre-Islamic time. That is the, so before the birth of Prophet Muhammad, the Arabia, it was inhabited by nomads called uh, Bidion, okay, or Bidoin and or Bidovid. So there, there are different pronunciations for this word. These nomads, they were divided into several tribes, which moved from one place to another in search of food and water. So we know that this is the basic feature of any nomadic community that they do not live a settled life. They don't stay at one place for a very long time. They keep on moving from one place to another. So such was the case for this particular tribe as well uh, that they kept on moving from one place to another, obviously in search of uh, food or in search of shelter. So what happened next? They often fought among themselves and each tribe had its own God generally symbolized by sacred stones. Muhammad, Prophet Muhammad that is, he belonged to the powerful Quraysh or Quraysh tribe. In Mecca, the, there was an ancient square shrine called Kaaba. It housed the idols of 360 gods and goddesses. The Kaaba served as a holy place of annual pilgrimage for the Arabic tribe. So we still know that uh, there were annual pilgrimage as well. So now we talk about the early life of Prophet Muhammad. Remember we started about the childhood and the early life of Jesus Christ also, that how he became a carpenter and then how he was baptized. So talking about Prophet Muhammad, now when he was born, he lost his parents at a very early age. So Prophet Muhammad was raised by his uncle Abu Talib. And he, uh, Moh uh, Prophet Muhammad, through his deeds, through his manner of work, through his conduct, he became a very popular and a, uh, he became popular because he was very sincere and very honest towards his work. After a few years, a wealthy widow, she employed him as an agent to travel with her trade caravans. So what happened when Prophet Muhammad started working uh, with this lady at that point of time? Uh, when Prophet Muhammad was sent for trade purposes, he brought along with him loads and loads of wealth. So this lady was very much impressed by the honesty as well as the sincerity of Prophet Muhammad towards his work. So she brought in a marriage proposal for Prophet Muhammad and Prophet Muhammad was married at the age of 25. So he did not like idol worship and other religious, religious practices followed by the people in Arabia. So just now we studied how idol worship was initially practiced by the tribe, but somewhere Prophet Muhammad was not convinced with this idea. With the passing of time, Muhammad turned to spiritualism and started going to the hills around Mecca for meditation. So because Prophet Muhammad was attracted towards the path of spirituality. He would go to the hills where it would be a kind of a secluded place and he would sit and meditate, trying to develop a connection with God, with Allah. During one such meditation in Cave Hira in 610 AD, Prophet Muhammad, who was then 40 years of age, he had a vision of angel Gabriel giving him the message or the revelation of God, that is teachings of Quran. So while he was sitting for one of the meditation session, he felt that God was talking to him and trying to reveal something. So once that revelation happened, there were certain key points that 
Prophet Muhammad spoke about. First, there is only one God who is Allah. People must submit to the will of Allah. And Allah has chosen, has chosen Prophet Muhammad to be his messenger or prophet. So earlier he was not called a prophet Muhammad, he was just called a Muhammad. So the third revelation was that he was the sender of God who was to spread the message of peace and harmony. Okay. Now, again, see how things are related. How I told you in the previous class that if you try and study about various religions, you will see that more or less the patterns are the same. So in previous class, we studied that how some people or the Jews, priests, they were against Christianity. They, they found the spread of Christianity as a threat to their position. So they probably made plans to stop the spread of Christianity. So, so was uh, the case of Islam when certain people opposed this beautiful religion as they did in, as some did in the case of Christianity. Three years after receiving the first revelation, Muhammad started preaching his views about the new religion to the people of Makkah. So he started talking to people that there's only one God. Then he said that we should submit to the will of Allah. And many people, they converted to the new religion. So many people converted themselves into Islam. However, the leading citizens, so when I say the word leading citizens, I mean the influential people, people who were uh, who had some political powers or who were extremely rich, who were influential people, they opposed Muhammad's idea of one God. At that time, Kaaba was under the control of the Quraysh tribe, also the tribe to which Muhammad, uh, Prophet Muhammad belonged. So Prophet Muhammad, he wanted the Kaaba to be dedicated to the worship of only one God and the removal of all idols from there. These ideas were rejected by the Quraysh tribe. Besides the wealthy Arab merchants also feared huge losses. Why? Because due to reduced number of pilgrims, pilgrims visiting the Kaaba after the removal of idols from there. So Arab merchants thought that they're going to suffer a lot of financial loss if the idols are, idols are, remo idols are removed. So the number of pilgrims would also be reduced. Well, who are pilgrims? Pilgrims are religious tourists or visitors. Okay. So therefore, they forced Muhammad and his followers to flee to Medina in 622 AD. So they tried to stop Prophet Muhammad from spreading the beautiful teachings of Islam. Okay. Now what happened after this? Okay, so the migration of Muhammad to Medina, what is it known as? It is known as Hijra and it marks the beginning of the Muslim calendar called Hijri. In Medina, Muhammad united the warring tribes, that is the uh, tribes who were constantly uh, fighting against each other. So he uh, united these tribes and won considerable support. Why? Because he was spreading the message of peace and love and harmony. He had a band of faithful supporters who were ready to die for Islam. They fought with, uh, with Meccan tribe for eight, eight years and finally conquered Makkah. Muhammad returned to Makkah and thereafter, the people of Makkah accepted Islam. When Muhammad died in 632 in Medina, almost the entire Arabian Peninsula had accepted Islam. Muhammad had succeeded in uniting the tribes of Arabia into a single religious polity. So pre-Islamic time, when Saudi Arabia was, the, was divided into several tribes, tribe, now through the teachings of Prophet Muhammad, all these tribes had united and accepted Islam as the religion. Now there were five main principles, or there are five main principles of Islam. Let's study that. So these are the five main principles of Islam. So the first is Shahada, that means faith. And what was the faith? That there is only one God and we should submit to the will of God, that is Allah. Then is Salah or Salah, that is prayer. So offering namaz. Like we read our holy uh, books. In Hindus, we read the holy book. Uh, people read Bible. They visit the church of Christianity. In uh, Islam, it is about offering prayers. And how do you do that? By offering namaz. Then is Zakat, that is charity. That means helping the needy. So again, I, as I just told you, if you read about the uh, aspects of different religions, you will find that things are more or less the same. Every religion 
talks about what are the common principles or common teachings of every religion peace harmony no discrimination helping the poor accepting the will of god so these are the main principles so same of course in islam also we talk about charity that is helping the poor then fasting so we all know about the fast fasting uh, month that is there in islam uh, religion in which they keep rosa and that is the which are kept the fast which are kept uh, they have their own traditions related to that and last is pilgrimage that is hajj visiting the hajj okay and people who visit hajj it is considered that these people are very fortunate so we have different pilgrimage sites for different religions for islam it is hajj now we talk about caliphate and the spread of islam okay but before that we need to understand the meanings of certain words okay let us start to understand that okay so the term caliph or khalifa in arabic it is generally regarded to mean the successor of prophet muhammad and what is caliphate khilafa in uh, arabic it denotes the office of the political leader okay of the muslim community or state particularly during the period from 632 to 1258 so caliph is the successor of prophet muhammad and caliphate is the office of the political leader so after the death of muhammad the caliphate was established why so as to preserve and ensure the growth of islam the first caliph was abu bakr who was a close friend of muhammad under the leadership of abu bakr began the spread of islam outside the arab peninsula so earlier the religion was more or less confined to the arab peninsula now it started spreading beyond the arab peninsula islam removed the barriers of race and nationality by embracing people of all other culture so the beauty of every religion that is accepting people accepting people who are belonging to different nationalities different culture different communities abu bakr and his three successors were umar ushan and ali who ruled from 632 to 661 ad okay now we are going to study about the dynasties okay all right so first let's understand about the umayyad dynasty so the umayyad dynasty it ruled from 661 ad to 750 ad their capital was damascus in syria and the uh, this dynasty it continued to win new territories and spread islam in all the directions and by 733 ad their islamic empire stretched from the indus valley in the east to spain in the west so you can understand the extent to which this religion was spread it in also included many african territories along with the mediterranean coast and the umayyads made arabic their official language they also constructed famous buildings such as the dome of the rock at jerusalem and the umayyad mos mosque at damascus okay so now you can see these are the people who are offering namaz okay they are basically bowing after offering namaz then you talk about the what uh, we are going to talk about the abbasid dynasty what about this dynasty so the uh, umayyad dynasty also uh, focused on the spread of islam what about the abbasid dynasty so the abbasid dynasty overthrew the umayyads in 750 ad and under the abbasids the caliphate emerged as a large prosperous and powerful empire in the world they ruled for about 500 years the abbasids shifted the capital from Dam uh, from damascus to baghdad and the ra the reign of the abbasids is also termed as the islamic golden age during this period muslims made great progress in the field of science mathematics literature art medicine architecture and other disciplines so you name a field and that is where the muslims made tremendous progress okay see this is the dome of the rock in jerusalem okay that was made by the umayyad dynasty the political power of the abbasids started declining at the end of the 9th century and one reason was the purchase of turkish slaves by the caliphs to help them manage their large empire 
many provinces of the empire were administered by the turkish slave officers and soldiers but as the number of turkish slaves grew in the abbasid administration they became unmanageable gradually the provincial turkish slave governors became powerful and independent so they became more powerful than their rulers and they turned the provinces into their kingdom thus reducing the power of the abbasid abbasid caliphate and finally the abbasid rule it ended when the when baghdad so they shifted the capital to baghdad so when baghdad was captured by the mongols in 1258 the abbasid rule also came to an end what is what was the impact of islam so the abbasid established the house of wisdom in baghdad and here what happened what was conducted the muslim scholars they translated into arabic the ancient greek or roman indian and other works of literature science mathematics etc by saving ancient knowledge from extinct extinction muslim scholars and scientists paved the way for scientific progress by europeans in the later centuries and in literature when we talk about the islamic golden age the great works such as zubayr by umar by sorry umar khayyam and then shahnama by firdosi and 1001 nights also called as arabian nights you all have heard of this novel which is called a collection of folk tales are significant okay then medieval muslims engineers and inventors they came up with a number of inventions some of these inventions were soap bar toothpaste then quartz glass things that we use even till date they learned and improved upon chinese techniques of paper making ceramics and silk weaving many modern educational scientific institutions have their origin in the early islamic world then the contribution of islamic civilization in the field of mathematics it includes development of algebra and algorithms so basically a lot of mathematical concepts were also uh, they were also originated or they also came into existence because of islam and the beautiful art of calligraphy the way you know the words are written in a very artistic way beautiful way that was also the one of the dimension of the art that was by the islamic community and for muslims calligraphy is the art of the spiritual world their holy book quran it has played an important role in the development of calligraphy muslim cities had advanced domestic water systems which were pipe drinking water so basically beautiful architecture as well and that we see uh in terms of the impressive mosque and fort and they had good idea about the town planning also so talking about calligraphy so let me just show you so let's say one second so let us talk about calligraphy so for example i have written here my name is prerna so i'll show you how calligraphic writing looks like so this is one of the forms this seria calligraphy uh i don't know if you have complete calligraphy in this okay so it's not available completely but it is somewhat like this if all of you can see it once again so see how beautifully in you know italicized font it is written though it is more beautiful than this text that i have written here try to search about how the calligraphic how alphabets are written in calligraphic form so i hope all of you have thoroughly understood about the rise and uh, the origin rise and spread of islam what are we going to do now we going to read the chapter again watch the video and then answer the questions on our own till then bye bye my dear students